This video will serve as a base for future videos where we'll talk about doors, crushers and other interactive map elements. The scope for this video will be limited to only showcasing line specials Doom has to offer, so we won't go into detail yet on how the code works or what kind of bugs they create. So what are line specials? It's a line that can trigger a special effect. This line can be either an invisible line on the floor or a wall. For example, walls can be turned into switches that open doors. Or invisible lines can be used to activate traps when walking over them. The line is giving a numeric tag and every sector that has an identical tag assigned to them will be affected by the line's effect. Before we start demonstrating the dozens of line specials Doom has to offer, we need to check how a line can be triggered. You've got lines that are triggered by pressing your use key. These are referred as S activations. These can be either S1 activations, which means they can only be triggered once, or SR, which means it's a repeatable trigger. There are lines that are activated by walking over them. These are referred as W activations. Same as switches. There's a W1 type and a WR for one time only and repeatable walk over triggers respectively. Then there's also lines that are activated by hitscan. Hitscan can be your fist, chainsaw, gunshots, pellets, and even monsters gunshots. Projectiles do not trigger this activation type, and neither do BFG tracers. This type is referred as G activations, and has a G1 and GR types. It's also worth mentioning that you cannot trigger a special while it's already busy doing another action. For example, these two switches control this wall. One switch opens it, and the other one closes it. As you can see, while the door is closing, you cannot reopen it mid-action, only when it's done closing. Alright, that's all the basic knowledge required, let's go check out those doors first. Doors in Doom can be split into two categories. Manual doors, doors that you physically interact with to open them, and remote doors. Remote doors are opened by walking over a trigger or pressing a remote switch. Let's start off by showcasing all the manual doors. You've got a door that when fully open, will close again after 4 seconds. Type 1 is pretty unique, because monsters can also open these when bumping into it. The other three require the blue, yellow or red key. The next door type can only be activated once and will remain open. Type 31, unlike type 1, cannot be opened by monsters. The rest requires the blue, red or yellow key. Type 46 is also special, as it requires a GR trigger, which means it needs to be hit by a hitscan to be activated. The next two doors are blaze doors, which were introduced in Doom 2. These move 4 times faster than regular doors. Type 117, when fully open, will close again after 4 seconds. Type 118 can only be opened once and stays open. Moving on to remote doors, we've again got a door that when fully open will close on their own after 4 seconds. It exists as S1, SR, W1 or WR variants. We've got a door that remains open when activated, exists as S1, SR, W1 or WR activations. The next special will close the door when triggered, triggered through S1, SR, W1 or WR activations. Up next we've got a door that will fully close and will open again after 30 seconds. It can be either a W1 trigger or WR. There are a lot of blaze doors too, but most of them are the same as the regular remote doors we just discussed. S1, SR, W1 or WR for doors that when fully open will close on their own after 4 seconds. Same with doors that remain open when activated. Also with doors that close. Then there are blaze doors that require colored keys. For each key, there's an S1 or SR variant, and when activated, the door remains open. There are also door effects that don't require any tags or lines to work. There are two sector types that turn the sector into an automated door. Sector type 10 is a door that automatically closes after 30 seconds upon map load. The most infamous usage of this is in Doom 2's Monster Condo, where a secret can only be obtained within 30 seconds after the map starts. Sector type 14 is even more extreme. This automatic door opens and closes again after 5 minutes. This door type thankfully remained unused in its software's maps. Ceilings can also be controlled in Doom. With type 40 you can raise the ceiling to the highest adjacent ceiling. This is done through a W1 trigger. The next ceiling type will lower the floor and can be activated through either an S1 or SR. 
This ceiling won't crush the player. The next one is almost the same, except that it leaves behind a gap of 8 map units between the floor and ceiling and is activated through either W1 or WR. Another S1 variant exists, but this one moves perpetually and does actually crush you with slow damage and will most likely kill the player. Crushing damage can be separated into two fields, slow damage and fast damage. Slow damage freezes the entity completely and deals fatal damage depending on the entity's height. Fast damage is less lethal, but still hurts. You've got a crusher that starts crushing with slow damage when activated by either a W1 or WR trigger. There's another one with exact same triggers, but for fast damage. Then there's one more, which is activated by W1, deals slow damage, but without making any sound. One last ceiling action exists that will stop the crusher, done through either a W1 or WR activation. Up next we have lifts. Lifts always start raised and get lowered when activated. We've got a lift that moves down, when fully down it waits for 3 seconds, then moves up again. It can be triggered through either S1, SR, W1 or WR. The WR activation can also be triggered by monsters. Then there's another one that works the same, except this one is classified as a turbo lift that was introduced in Doom 2. It moves 2 times faster, that's all. These are also triggered through S1, SR, W1 or WR activations, although this time the WR one cannot be activated by monsters. There are also slow lifts that perpetually move up and down. Each time the lift reaches its destination, it will pause for 3 seconds before going to the opposite direction. This type of lift can be activated through either W1 or WR. This lift can also be stopped using a W1 or WR activation. Doom has loads of floor related specials too, let's go. We've got a floor that slowly raises to the next higher neighboring floor, activated through S1, SR, W1 or WR. There's also a turbo variant introduced in Doom 2 with the same 4 activation types. There's a floor that does the exact same thing as the slow version, but this one will be permanently locked out from further changes, along with the 4 aforementioned activation types that can also be activated using a G1 trigger. And another thing, it will change the floor texture to the texture the trigger frontline is facing. The sector type is also set to zero, and stuff like secrets and damaging floors will disappear. Light effects do not. Then we've got a special that raises the floor to the lower ceiling, also adjacent ceilings. Activated through S1, SR, W1, WR or G1. Another special exists that is nearly identical, but this one stops 8 map units before it makes contact with the ceiling and crushes entities with slow damage too. Also does not have a G1 trigger. The next few floors go up in steps. Types 58 and 92 move up by 24 map units using W1 and WR triggers respectively. Types 15 and 66 do the same thing, but also transfer floor textures and reset sector types. They are triggered by S1 or SR activations instead. Types 59 and 93 do the same thing, except they transfer damaging floors and secret sectors from the trigger's front facing line to the affected sector. They are activated through W1 or WR. Since you can transfer secret sectors like this, you can get over 100% secrets this way, as they are created on the fly, which is something Doom cannot really handle. It's also worth mentioning that the game cannot transfer the sector's light effects. Sector type 4 is a damaging floor with flickering lights. It will transfer the damaging floor properties, but not the light effects. Types 14 and 67 move up 32 map units and are activated through S1 and SR. These will also transfer floor textures and reset their sector types. Type 140 is a big boy and will raise 512 map units through an S1 activation. We've also got a floor that moves up a variable amount of map units depending on the neighboring wall textures. Types 30 and 96 are raised to the height of the shortest lower texture facing out from the sector. Shifting the texture's vertical offset will not affect the height. Those were all the ascending floors. We also of course have a bunch of descending floors. We've got a floor that slowly lowers itself to the lowest adjacent floor, activated through S1, SR, W1 or WR. An identical floor special exists, but this one transfers the floor texture and sector type. 
The sector that gets transferred is the one adjacent to the lowest numbered line dev that makes up the tagged sector, triggered through either W1 or WR. Then we've got a variant that lowers itself to the highest adjacent floor, also activated through S1, SR, W1 or WR. Another variant exists where it lowers to the highest adjacent floor, but stops 8 map units before its goal. It also moves faster, triggered through S1, SR, W1 or WR activations. The last one is called a donut. Basically what it does is the hole moves down, while the ring moves up to the ring's neighboring floors. The ring will also change its floor texture to the sector neighboring the lowest numbered line dev of the tagged sector, only activated through an S1 trigger. There are also mapping tricks to make floors move up or down instantly. These can be used to create stuff like bridges, where the bridge will raise or lower instantly depending on which side it's approached from. Again, this will be reserved for a future video where we can really dive deep into the details. Doom also has some very conditional specials that are activated by killing certain types of enemies in specific levels. If you're playing Doom 1 and kill all the barons in a level that occupies slot E1 M8, all sectors that attack with tag 666 will lower to the lowest adjacent floor. In E4 M6, killing all cyber demons will trigger sectors with tag 666 and open them up blazingly. In E4 M8, killing all the spider demons will lower all sectors with tag 666 to the lowest adjacent floor. In Doom 2, if you're playing a map that occupies slot 7 and kill all mancubi, all sectors with tag 666 will lower to the lowest adjacent floor. Also in map 7, killing all arachnotrons will raise all sectors with tag 667 to the height of the shortest texture that neighbors the sector. Killing all commander keens in any Doom 2 map will cause all sectors with tag 666 to permanently open up as regular doors. Doom also has a nifty stairs builder. The regular stairs builder raises one step at a time by 8 map units. The following step will raise 8 units above the previous one, and so forth. This one has both an S1 and W1 trigger. Doom 2 introduced the Turbo Stairs Builder. This one has steps of 60 map units, and as the name implies, builds it really fast. This one is also activated through S1 or W1. Up next we've got the Teleporters. You've got teleporters for both players and monsters that are activated through either W1 or WR activations. The teleporter points to a teleporter destination inside the sector it shares its stack with. Then there's also teleporters for monsters only. This one also has W1 and WR triggers. Doom also allows you to have some fun with the sector's lighting. You can completely turn off a sector's light using both W1 and WR triggers, but also turn it on with full brightness using the exact same triggers. You can also make it adjust its light level to the brightest adjacent sector also using W1 and WR triggers. Then there's a W1 trigger to change the sector's brightness to the darkest adjacent sector. Type 17 is also a W1 trigger, which makes the sector's light start blinking. Doom 2 introduced repeatable light switches. Type 138 turns on the lights to full brightness, while Type 139 turns it off. There's one unique line special that doesn't need to be activated by the player. Type 38 will make the texture scroll to the left. To wrap up the demonstration, let's fittingly take a look at level exits. There's of course the special that exits the map. This can be done through either a switch or a walkover activation. There's also an S1 and W1 for secret exits. Secret exits require specific conditions to work. Only a small selection of levels supports secret exits. In Doom 1, your secret exits will only work in the following map slots. E1M3, E2M5, E3M6, and E4M2. Each secret exit takes you to the episode's 9th map. In Doom 2, it must be map 15 or map 31. The latter will bring you to map 32. If you place a secret exit outside any of the aforementioned maps, it will restart the current map. And that's all. Like I said, it's a fairly basic video, but in future videos we'll target specific elements like doors or teleporters and dive deep into their code. I also want to show off all the specials Boom introduced, as they're really interesting and fun to toy with. Stay tuned! Thank you all for watching, thanks to the Patreon support, and shoutouts to 19 Day, Agonizing Rectal Pain, Andrew Riss, Andrew Yukumchuk, Andre Dicklin, Art Cox, Basil, Beaks Make Me Coom, Bouncy Bob, Ryan Thompson, Bunderstorm, Kappa Bitch, Chief Kotrake, Cyprian Rusen, Fabrizio Araya, Jesse Bevins, Joseph Shans, Katsune Teku, Kirill Korobets, Lars Soderberg, Matthew Merican, Matthias Sippert, Nighthawk71, Pyro Shi, Quake Gamer 632, Raven King, 
Retro Game Bro, Ryan Quinn, Riley, Robert Wakeley, Room Temperature, Sean Wang, Sensodyne93, Shakes999, Specteer, Steak Jacobs, Steven Halustic, Tekokami, Bell Tolls, Thomas, Tim Grasimov, Turbine2k5, and Vladimir Zherkov. As always, thank you for the ongoing support. See you later.